Have you ever heard the terms grower or shower in the context of penis sizes? Allow me to enlighten you. In the realm of scientific research, these terms have been coined to categorize penises based on their size transformation from a flaccid state to an erect one. A grower, as the term suggests, pertains to a penis that experiences a significant increase in size when erect. To be precise, if a penis inflates by more than 56% when aroused, it falls into the grower category. On the flip side, a shower refers to a penis that doesn't see as much of a size surge when erect. In this case, an increase of less than 36% from the flaccid state classifies it as a shower. It's interesting to note that showers typically have a longer flaccid length compared to growers, but the difference isn't as stark when erect. Now that we have the definitions clear, let's delve into the specifics of the study that brought us this knowledge. A study conducted in Madrid, Spain, took a deep dive into this topic, and the results were nothing short of fascinating. In the heart of Spain, a group of dedicated researchers embarked on a unique journey to unravel the mysteries of masculinity. Using the power of modern technology, specifically ultrasound scans, they meticulously examined 225 penises. Yes, you heard it right, 225. In scientific research, the larger the sample size, the more credible the findings. And in this case, the sample size was substantial enough to yield some intriguing findings. The study aimed to categorize penises based on their size when flaccid versus erect, leading to the terms we now know as grower and shower. The results? Quite unexpected, to be frank. The study found that if a penis increases in size by more than 56% when erect, it falls into the grower category. On the other hand, an increase of less than 36% puts one in the shower category. But here's the real kicker. The distribution of growers and showers was almost equal among the participants. That's right, only 24% of the subjects were classified as growers and 25% were considered showers. It's fascinating to think that these two categories, which we often assume are vastly different, are almost equally prevalent. What's more, the researchers discovered that showers tend to have longer flaccid penises compared to growers. This is an interesting revelation, considering the common perception that growers would naturally have a more significant increase in size. It seems that growers and showers are almost equally prevalent, according to this study. But what factors predict whether someone is a grower or a shower? As we delve deeper into this intriguing subject, we'll discover the factors that possibly determine whether someone falls into the grower or shower category. Stay tuned as we continue to unravel the mystique of masculinity. Determining whether someone is a grower or a shower isn't as straightforward as you might think. It's not a simple case of size matters, but rather how much change occurs from a flaccid state to an erect one. The study conducted in Madrid found that an increase in size of more than 56% when erect categorizes a penis as a grower. On the other hand, an increase of less than 36% would categorize it as a shower. But the question is, what factors predict these categories? According to the study, the answer may lie in the flaccid length. It appears that there is a correlation between flaccid penis length and the classification of being a grower or a shower. The study found that showers tend to have longer flaccid penises compared to growers. This suggests that the initial length may play a significant role in the classification. But it's not a one-size-fits-all prediction. The researchers noted that only 24% of participants were classified as growers, while 25% were considered showers. This means that more than half of the participants fell outside these classifications. So while flaccid length can be a factor, it's not the sole determining element. It's also important to note that the average erect penis length was around 14.37 centimeters, or approximately 5.7 inches. This suggests that despite the differences in flaccid length and percentage increase, the average erect length remains relatively consistent. So it appears that flaccid length might give us some hints. But what does this mean in practical terms? This isn't just a topic of idle curiosity. The findings of this study have practical implications in the medical field. So let's get into it. How can these findings be useful, you ask? 
Well, in the realm of urology, our understanding of growers and showers can significantly influence surgical decisions. For instance, when doctors are planning surgeries that involve the penis, they need to consider how the organ size may change during the procedure. Knowing whether a patient is a grower or a shower can help doctors anticipate the potential changes and plan accordingly. It's not just about size, but how that size changes in different states, which could impact the success and the outcomes of the surgery. Furthermore, this study's findings have psychological implications as well. We live in a world where there's often a lot of unnecessary stress and anxiety around penis size. This study helps to break down some of the myths and misconceptions. Understanding that there is a significant variation in how penises change from flaccid to erect state can provide relief to individuals who may be concerned about their size when flaccid. It's about understanding that being a grower or a shower is just a part of natural human variation. It doesn't determine your worth, your masculinity or your sexual prowess. It's just a physical characteristic like being tall or short, having blue eyes or brown. The key takeaway here is that this study provides us with a more nuanced understanding of penis size, which can lead to better surgical outcomes and less unnecessary stress and anxiety for men. So the next time someone brings up the topic of growers and showers, you can share these insights and help to dispel some of the myths and misconceptions. Knowledge is power, as they say. Now let's tackle some common questions about this topic. You may have a few questions swirling around in your mind about this topic. Let's address a few of the most common ones. A question often asked is, can I change from being a grower to a shower? Well, the simple answer is no. The categorization of grower or shower is primarily based on physiological factors that are determined by your genetic makeup. It's not something that can be altered through exercises, medications, or any other methods. Just as you can't change your height, you can't change your status as a grower or a shower. Another common question is, does being a grower or a shower affect sexual performance? The answer is not at all. Sexual performance is not determined by the size of a penis, whether flaccid or erect. It's more about emotional connection, communication and understanding your partner's needs and preferences. So whether you're a grower or a shower, it doesn't influence your ability to satisfy your partner. One might also wonder, does the size of a penis, grower or shower affect fertility? Again, the answer is no. Fertility is determined by the quality and quantity of sperm, not the size of the penis. A grower or a shower has just as much chance of fathering a child as the other. Lastly, are there health implications associated with being a grower or a shower? As per current research, there are no specific health risks or benefits associated with being a grower or a shower. It's simply a feature of your anatomy, much like having blue eyes or brown hair. And with that, we've shed some light on a topic that's often shrouded in mystery and misinformation. Remember, everybody is unique and there's no normal when it comes to penis sizes.